Oh my gosh, here we go. Hey everyone, Lexenda Swirl here. New day, new Tumblr project. I am once again playing with PBO paints, in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> and this time, with any luck, well, yeah, who knows, right? Just to recap, I love some of the PBO paints, specifically their fantasy paints, while certain other people, in spite of my attempts to sway them, definitely do not. <laughs> there have been a couple of videos about PBO paints on both sides, this being my latest here, and we'll just say it's led to this point. So here is Anthony Crammon's latest proclamation about the PBO fantasy paints. That horrible fantasy prism paint. I didn't like them at all. And this was my reaction. Of course you realize this means war. But that's all kind of silly, so let's just talk about the paints we're going to be using today. These are all the different paints I plan on using in this video. Quickly, these are the fantasy paints that I love and... Anthony Crammon despises. To be fair to him, Ray over at Ray's Turquoise Turtles says she doesn't like these much either, so clearly I'm in the minority here. These are the vitriol translucent glass paints that I also enjoy working with. I had thought that Anthony never used these, but it turns out there is a tiny, tiny silver lining to re-watching someone else's videos an embarrassingly pathetic number of times because he actually used one of these in his blind Pinterest challenge number 14 video and fittingly he didn't seem terribly impressed with it. These are the ceramic paints that he really enjoyed using in his most recent PBO video. Links to all of these videos below. I have not tried these ceramic paints yet but I'm looking forward to it. And lastly these are PBO's porcelain paints. These are also for glass and ceramic, but the big difference here is that these porcelain paints are water-based, whereas all these other paints are solvent-based. I will indeed be crossing streams in this video, and we all know it would be bad. So clearly the results will either be a very interesting tumbler or most likely a spectacular failure. Here's what we're going to do. This is a Massey Leaky Cup. I will link to everything below where I got it all. This is a 20 ounce skinny straight from Makerflow. Sanded it, washed it, spray painted it matte white with Rust-Oleum 2X paint, but any paint will do. This is a Da Vinci liquid art panel. And the reason I picked this is because it has a lip all the way around. So the paint that falls in it will not then fall off the side like a more traditional paint pour will. So I'm going to put this back. I have another camera going on the side. Hopefully we will end up with something that we can use. I'm going to start stirring and pouring one paint at a time. I'm going to use a little bits of each. Sit back and enjoy the show. I'll try to keep colors that don't play well together apart, but I, I may not succeed. I will be using up some of my older paints completely and just saying goodbye to them, that's fine. I'm going to let it drip when I'll come back in, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, something like that. And then I'll move the cup off to a mat so it can dry on its own. We'll see if this is doing anything still. If it is, I'll set the camera for time lapse. Yeah, eventually we'll meet back here and take a look at everything. And we're back. 
The cup and the artwork have both dried and look, to me anyway, quite gorgeous and more than a little bit strange, but that suits me just fine. Do they really show off what I consider to be the amazing property of PBO paints? Yeah, not really, honestly. It's possible that you could get something similar to both of these using acrylic pouring paints. I'm not sure you could achieve the cracking and the different textures, but it would be similar. And depending on the acrylics you use, probably a lot less expensive than using PBO paints. So this is it. I've done my final PBO video, I promise. <laughs> and my guess is that Anthony Crammon and I will continue agreeing to disagree about these paints. And that's okay. Before I finish this tumbler, I want to express a huge thank you to him for being such a good sport about all of this and for providing me so much inspiration for both of my channels. I'm dead serious when I tell you folks viewing this video that if you don't watch his channel, you really are missing out. As for this tumbler, coming up with something to finish this was very hard. I spent a good hour or more just looking at it like this, <laughs> then looking at graphics, then looking at my long list of snarky sayings, and I still didn't have a clue. I almost went with a saying that makes me laugh, and I was pretty sure would also make Anthony laugh, but honestly has absolutely nothing to do whatsoever with this tumbler or these paints or this video. So then I thought of some sort of line art that I could stickleify, and while that would be pretty and sparkly, it really wouldn't fit the look of the cup at all. So finally, I went with the idea of the vertical streaks of all the different colors from the tumbler itself, and I found this graphic. If you would have chosen something else, please feel free to comment down below. I'm always open to suggestions, unless, of course, your suggestion is to scrap the cup completely. You just keep that suggestion to yourself because I'm hanging on to this one. I did a print and cut of this beautiful Zentangle. I don't know if that's how you say it. The Zentangle, Zentangle dragon. And I think it looks, I think it looks like it belongs on this cup. I really do. There we go. All right. So I'm going to put a final layer of resin on the tumbler and over the wall art, and then we will head outside for the big sunshine reveal. Stay safe, everyone. I'll see you in the next video, but don't go away. Mm -hmm.